all, thank you very much for meeting with us today. Can you please tell me a little bit about your role here at New Zealand? So I'm a senior developer slash tech lead is my role, so I do a combination of dependent on project, um, either leading a team exclusively, which means that I'm responsible for um, low-level low technical design as well as mentoring uh, more junior team, team leaders, sorry, team members, and um, just liaising with the project management team, making sure a project is delivered on time and to a good uh, quality standard. And how did you find yourself in such a role? Um, tech leading is a fairly natural progression from senior developers, so any senior developers who show leader, leadership skills generally find, find they'll be asked to tech lead at some point or other. And somebody who's in a mentorship role, um, do you use that outside of New Zealand at all? Uh, I guess quite naturally, yeah. I'm in, a, I'm in a couple of groups where I sort of take leadership positions in social groups. I'm in an expats group, for example, and I'm running events for them. Um, I'm in a band, it's a South American samba band, strange for a skinny white guy, but <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a section leader in that as well, and yeah, I, I guess so. It's kind of maybe not just a natural attribute. What sort of advice would you give to somebody who is looking to enter the IT industry? Um, I guess there's fairly uh, well-known paths into the IT industry through tertiary education, so anyone with a degree, it's, it's I suppose deciding that you want to do it, first up. And I think once you're in there though, the important thing is just to keep learning. Um, I think technology is changing at such a rapid pace these days, it's, it's easy to get complacent, it's easy to get pigeonholed, and if you're not constantly looking at new technologies and what's progressing and what's changing, um, you're going you're gonna to find yourself stuck at some point quite quickly. Keep learning, mm. before doing. <laughs> and what are the biggest changes that you've seen in, in your area in, in technology? Um, I guess the, the internet affects everything. So where when I started out, the internet was only in its, its dawn. Um, these days it's everywhere, so you're talking about, obviously mobile is, is huge, and that's been the big thing for the last five to six years. The next big thing that seems to, will, will be a sea change is devices everywhere, so internet of things, that type of thing. Um, the type of software that we will need to accommodate those types of devices is quite different than we've got now. And funnily enough, as people, people think that technology is only getting more powerful, which is true. But when you've got something like a smoke alarm or your fridge, these are very low powered devices in terms of computing, so we're actually having to become more skilled again at programming in a highly restricted environment, whereas uh, from the 70s onwards, we only got increasing amounts of power. You mentioned that you are mentoring um, other people. Is that something that you received yourself from a role model? Yep, absolutely. So my first job uh, back in Ireland was with a a R&D, a software company. Um, out of college I was still pretty green. Um, I was lucky enough to find myself in a small company where you get exposed to all sorts of different scenarios and you're asked to do pretty much everything. So um, we, had, we had a few very good people there and I got sort of taken under their wings. Uh, I found myself moving, moving along quite quickly in, in that environment, so that was great. Somebody who is uh, in the middle of their career and would want to progress further into a leadership role. So any advice that you would um, pass on? Again, depends on where you want to go. For somebody in my position, the probably there's a couple of um, well-known career paths, so perhaps to go into project management or into technical architecture. Um, people, Somebody with more people skills might choose the management role. If you're more of a techie, you might choose the, uh, the architecture role. Um, so again, I think if you've been proactive in your, in, in your learning, in, in your career up to that point, probably you know quite naturally what you're good at, what you want to do. Um, so, again, if you've got those leadership skills, you've got the technical capability, it'll just happen for you. You mentioned that you were in a contract role. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to me a little bit about um, pros and cons of uh, contract roles and, and how that's been different from you from being in a, a permanent position? Sure. Uh, well, firstly, I became a contractor completely by accident. <laughs> I took up a friend's job, which happened to be a contract role. He was leaving Auckland as, as I arrived, so I just took his job. Um, pros, uh, more money. <laughs> it's always good. Uh, more flexibility. Um, I've never been turned down for leave because I think management finds it a bit easier to say yes to your leave when they're not paying for it. If you're a permi, they're still paying for you while you're away. Um, I think as a contractor, you're always more you're always a little bit more open to change because 
the, your contract renewal, your, your security is only as long as your current contract, which is usually a number of months, maybe six to 12. So I think you're, you become much more adaptable. I've learned a lot of skills going through a lot of organizations, just being able to hit the ground running, being able to know exactly what I need to do on day one to be productive, which potentially I think some permits struggle with when they change roles after maybe five to 10 years in one role moving to another one. We've worked on a few projects where, for example, we took our entire online booking system and rewrote it. Um, it was written in 10-year-old technologies. We've rewritten it in modern technology. Um, it looks a lot better from the in inside in, ter in terms of the code itself. is a lot better. It looks a lot better for customers as well. Um, it's a lot more efficient and cost-effective for the business to maintain. It's a lot easier for them to extend. Um, so the other type of project is, are the types where the business will come to us and say, We've got this idea, uh, we believe it's going to deliver us a lot of money, X amount of revenue, please can you make it happen? So some projects that I've worked on recently were of, of that type are uh, Fairhold, for example, where a customer's company owns their own website, they search for a flight, they see a price perhaps that they like, but they don't, don't want to commit to booking right now, so maybe they don't have a sign off from the wife, maybe they just want to think about it for a few days, so they can pay a small fee to hold that fare for up to three days and then they can come back and be guaranteed that the availability will still be there, complete the booking. Um, another one is where we called multi-currency pricing. So if I'm on the New Zealand booking site and I've got, let's say I'm an Australian person, I've got an Australian card, I can choose, we will present the customer with the option to pay in their local currency, which is cheaper for them, it, it saves them bank, bank charges. You're obviously quite uh, passionate about your technology. Is there anything that you do outside of work to uh, give back? Uh, I guess the most recent thing I, I've done, I was involved in a, a hackathon called JHack recently where I mentored a, a bunch of kids, school kids from ages 7 to 16 up. Um, MIT ran, ran this event where I think it was about 170 kids on the day um, using the game Minecraft where they were manipulating the game through code. So I, I, met, I went down to the school two or three times every week for a month just to teach them how to code. and. Um, yeah, just try and get kids into tech. There's a lot of opportunities, but I think kids at that age don't really know what coding is. They don't know a lot about the IT, IT industry. So yeah, it was just a really rewarding experience. Fantastic. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your time with us today. You're welcome.